Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel and this series where we aim to take electronic circuit concepts and demonstrate them in a practical manner and make things that seem difficult more easy to understand. This video is the second part of a two-part video that aims to take a look at one of the most fundamental concepts in analyzing circuits and its voltage and current division. This video aims to look at voltage divider rule and applications of voltage division. Understanding these rules is an essential thing for any beginner in electronics, and they allow us to calculate voltage and current values in complex circuits. In this video, we will be looking at one of the applications of voltage division in our workbench. And to do so, we need the following tools. We would need a 10 kilo ohms potentiometer, a battery of 9 volts, some jumper wires, a buzzer, a breadboard, and a multimeter. But before diving into this concept and looking at the applications of voltage division, it's important to clarify that this video assumes that the viewer has a understanding of nodes, meshes, loops, and branches, as well as how to use multimeters to measure resistance and voltage. This video also assumes that the viewer has a solid foundation on the different types of circuit connections, such as series and parallel connections. If not, you can watch my videos on these topics, which you can find in the playlist of this series. Remember that circuits can be connected in many different ways. In our previous video, we looked at current division in parallel circuits. And as we will be looking at the voltage divider rule, or VDR, let's start with reviewing the basics of series circuits and what we've learned so far about them. Series circuits are circuits with components connected in a way where the same current flows through them, and voltage is divided across elements in a series circuit. To calculate series resistance, we must add up the resistors in series. As we've learned from the series, voltage is divided in a series circuit. So let's go ahead and take a look at voltage division in series circuits and the derivation of the VDR or voltage divider rule equation. In our last two videos prior to this two part video, we verified that the voltage divides in elements connected in series and that current remains the same while flowing through series elements. Now, let's consider the circuit below with multiple elements in series. To be more precise, an n number of resistors connected in series with a power supply. Say we'd like to find the voltage across resistor n. To do so, we must use Ohm's law. Therefore, we can say that Vrn, or the voltage on resistor n, is equal to I total, the current flowing through all the resistors, into Rn, where I total is equal to the V of the power supply over the total series resistance. Therefore, substituting I total's equation into Vrn's equation, we get the following. Vrn, or the voltage across resistor Rn, is equal to Rn, the value of the resistor Rn, over the total series resistance into the voltage in series with these series resistance or the voltage of the power supply, where R total is the sum of series resistance. Therefore, rather than using KVL in our analysis to find the voltage on series elements, we can directly obtain the voltage of, of a series resistance using the voltage divider rule. The voltage divider rule is given as follows, where Rx is the resistance in a series circuit that we would like to find the voltage across, and R total is the equivalent series resistance. Now that we understood how we derived the voltage divider rule circuit, let's take a look at applications of VDR. Voltage dividers are widely used in the design of electrical circuits. 
One of the most common applications is the potentiometer. A potentiometer is a passive electronic component with a sliding or rotating function that acts as an adjustable voltage divider, where passive means that this component consumes energy and does not produce it. The voltage input is applied across the entire length of the potentiometer, and the output voltage is controlled with the fixed or sliding contact of the potentiometer. And there are two types of potentiometer. We have the rotary potentiometer, which has the rotary knob to control the voltage on the output voltage. And we have the linear potentiometer with a slider that can allow us to control the output voltage. In our video, we will be looking at how rotary potentiometers work. In a rotating contact type potentiometer, there is a resistive track which is connected between terminals 1, here denoted as V+, plus, and terminal 3, here denoted as ground. A knob, known as a wiper, will move from end to end of the resistive track between 1 and 3 to vary the resistance. And with varying this, this resistance, we vary the output voltage at terminal 2. Let us see how potentiometer works. If you measure the resistance between the outer terminals, which is terminal 1 and terminal 3, we will measure the maximum value of the potentiometer. If our potentiometer is a 10 kiloohm potentiometer, then if we put the leads of the multimeter while measuring the resistance across terminal 1 and 3, we will measure 10 kiloohms. But if we measure the resistance between one of the outer terminals and the wiper or the, the rotary knob, then we will get a value that is dependent on the position of that wiper. So it depends on where we have moved the knob to in that resistive track. So it can range from 0 kiloohms to 10 kiloohms. And with varying that resistance, we vary the output voltage on terminal 2. So let's get to the workbench and see the potentiometer in action. First, we will connect the circuit as shown. We have a 9 voltage power supply connected to a potentiometer that is connected to a buzzer. If the voltage on the output terminal of the potentiometer, which is the second terminal, is high enough, the buzzer will make a sound. And if it's not, then it won't make a sound. But first, we will measure the resistance across terminal 1 and 3 and verify that the potentiometer is, gives, is giving a resistance of that with, of which it is rated. In our case, since I'm using a 10 kiloohms potentiometer, I must get a, a value close to 10 kiloohms. Then we will be turning the wipe or the knob of the potentiometer and measuring the voltage across terminal 2 and 3. And we will watch as the resistance changes as we turn on the wipe. Remember to unplug the power supply when measuring resistance. After measuring resistance, we will plug in the power supply and watch as we turn the wipe of the potentiometer and see what happens. So this is our circuit. We've got a 10 kiloohm potentiometer with three terminals, each connected to a separate node. We've got the first terminal connected to the positive uh, power supply node. And we've got the second or the third terminal connected to ground. And we've got the third terminal connected to the buzzer. This buzzer has the positive end connected to the output terminal of the potentiometer and the other terminal connected to ground. But before we plug in the power supply and see what happens when we turn on the knob of the potentiometer, let's turn the knob to, the, to its fullest, 
okay, on one side, and measure the resistance across terminal 1 and terminal 3. So we've got our uh, multimeter switched on, and we're going to turn on the knob or dial of the multimeter to measure in the 20 kilo ohms range such that we can catch the resistance of the potentiometer across the first and third terminal. To measure the resistance across the first and third terminal, we're going to put on one of the ends or leads of the multimeter on the first terminal and the second on the second terminal. And we can measure about 9.42 kilo ohms worth of resistance across the first and third terminals. Okay. Now, with the knob turned to its to its minimum, let's measure the resistance across the second and third terminal. We can see that when we have the knob or the wipe, and at at minimum we measure about zero ohms of resistance. As we turn on the knob, slowly, further and further, we can see that the resistance increases. Until we turn the knob to its maximum, and we can measure about 9.42 kilo ohms. Now with the potentiometer at the minimum, so measuring the voltage across the buzzer, we get about zero volts. And as we turn on the potentiometer and increase the voltage across the buzzer up to a certain point, we can, we can hear a little bit of a white noise. And as we reach 8.96 volts, we can begin to hear the buzzer ringing. And as we turn down the potentiometer and lower the voltage across the the output and and lower the voltage coming out of the potentiometer at the second terminal that is powering the buzzer when we lower it down we get no sound and as we increase it we begin to hear the buzzer sound Thank you for watching this video and I hope you found it useful. If you're interested in supporting me, please consider subscribing to the channel or through checking out my Patreon page. And as always, thank you for watching.